you everyone uh, for joining this talk. Um, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Lilian Mantilla. I'm from Colombia. I moved to Germany 10 years ago to pursue a master's degree in business administration and engineering. After that, I worked at Delivery Hero, an online food delivery platform as BI analyst. Currently, I lead the BI team at Moonfer, which is a technology platform that enables individuals and their advisors to invest in top tier private equity funds subject to eligibility. By the way, if you would like to know more about what Moonfer does, feel free to join the talk that will take place tomorrow at 1.20 with my colleagues. Today, I want to tell you about my journey as the first data person at Moonfer, to be given the opportunity to build and scale the BI environment. I will be doing this by presenting the conceptual approach which has been used, followed by a walk through the implementation process, then how we have tackled growth and complexity, and lastly, I will be sharing some recommendations with you. Let's start by the architecture framework. So this is what I got myself into back in 2018 when I first joined Moonfer. 15 employees, including myself, one market, one business unit, three data sources, and a user base of around 10,000 users. What's more, Moonfer was in the urgent need of setting up the business KPIs, having automated and real-time reporting, and knowing who the user were. And then, here I was, a BI analyst with a couple of CSP files ready to take on this challenge. So I, I wonder, certainly there is an easier way of movie files. Huh? Therefore, and in order to find out a way of the, that pickle, I rely on the use of an architectural framework. Let's put it in this way. BI environments and houses have something in common. When you plan to build a house, you start by determining its purpose. Is it a place to live? A place to live and work? a place to raise kids, or is it a place to grow old? When doing this, you put together a wish list on the architectural style, size, and type of room. When you hire an architect to design the house, create a detailed blueprint, and most importantly, advise you on what is really possible or practical given your location, house size, wishes, budget, and timeline. When architecture is knowing the picture, the house will most likely know meet expectation in terms of design, flow, and purpose. Similarly, a BI environment which has not been well thought out doesn't shed light on what is unknown. It increases uncertainty and it doesn't, in a timely manner, help the business to make informed decisions and understand their operations, customer, competitor, suppliers, among others. In short, the architecture, as a rich Sherman claims, sets your directions and goals. It's a set of guiding principles, but it should be flexible enough to allow for incremental growth. The framework is made up of four architectural layers and is meant to be followed starting from the top down. That is informational architecture, data architecture, technical architecture, and product architecture. And the implementation should ideally come from the bottom up. When followed properly, this approach will avoid and the architecture is determined by vendors instead of company needs. 
Let's look at the ledgers in detail. Firstly, the information architecture defines the business context. The what describes the business process of functions that are going to be supported, the type of analytics that will be needed, and the type of decisions that will be made. The who refers to people accessing and involving it, such as employees, partners, suppliers, among others. The where specify the location of the data, whether it will be integrated and or consumed in analytical applications. And the why gather the business and the technical requirements. The following layer is the data architecture, a blueprint that helps align the company's data with the business strategies. It starts where the data is created in the source system by information providers, continues with the data integration, and gathers, consolidates, transforms, cleanses, and aggregates the data that is then stored in the data warehouse and ends when the business person performs data analysis or when information is delivered to the business user. Moving on to the framework, the technical architecture defines the technologies that are used to develop the service. This covers the entire life cycle of discover, define, design, develop, and deploy. Lastly, the product architecture involves the list of products that are available in the market to fulfill the technical architecture requirements. And now, based on the framework, I will describe the initial implementation as it was designed in 2018. The data architecture was made up by a centralized Amazon relational database that stored consolidated data from mainly back office transactional system after carrying out the ETL process and cleansing the data through either Talent or Python to be able to query it and to enable cross-functional reporting via Tableau and or ad hoc analysis. The main advantages of the initial setup were a low-cost environment, easy to maintain with a limited number of data sources and therefore a small data volume. Besides that, business KPIs were available in an automated way for business users as per initial business request. But still, there were a few disadvantages. Real-time data was not available as the ETL was running in a batch updating the data warehouse overnight. Error logs were not in place and the whole operation system was relied on a single, on a single engine. This was not a main issue for us though as we managed to make it work until the business started evolving and complexity became a challenge. So let's now discuss how we have tackled such a growth and complexity. And look at this now. Time flies by and after four years, Moonfer has turned into a fast growing company with 200 employees six new markets, five business units, multiple data sources, and a user base of around 100,000. Logically, there has also been an increase in data volume that flows both internally and externally, and that poses new challenges when it comes to, the, to integrating the data on real-time basis. That brings us to the need to review the framework and develop the design of a BI environment that supports globalization, flexibility, and of course, scalability. Scalability on a technical level. That is, how we support a significant increase in data volume 
and concurrent user of the data platform. And scalability on our organizational level, in other words, how we support a growing number of analysts, engineers, and scientists while keeping time to inside law. So what we are aiming to achieve with the new design is, firstly, the coupling storage and compute, leading me to a more flexible and cost-effective setup for supporting data than scaling volume as well as in complexity. Secondly, significantly reducing the need for transformation jobs, which will decrease the dependency of data analysts, domain business analysts, and data scientists on data engineering, thus reducing the time to insight. Thirdly, creating an opening ecosystem where the data formats used are open source and compatible with a vast array of tools deployed by the data community, avoiding vendor lock-in. And lastly, providing raw and opinated data for data science use case. Then, here it is. The new data architectures that aims to reduce complexity and costs around the data and create an environment where business users are not entirely dependent on IT. Now, the data integration and data warehouse ledgers has been replaced with a data lake query engine that incorporates capabilities for data acceleration, data curation, and data lineage, all on any source and deliver as a self-service platform, helping analysts, data scientists, and data engineers to be more effective with data. This infrastructure gives us a leg up because it includes a variety of standout features. To begin with, it provides SQL on any data source, including optimization to improve the performance of a SQL query. And parallel connectivity to no rational systems like S3 and Hadoop distributed file system. It also allows cross data source joins across multiple disparate systems and technologies between relational and no SQL, S3, Hadoop distributed file system, and more. In addition to this, it provides full visibility into data lineage from data sources through transformation, joined with other data sources, and allow for sharing with other users. Also, it offers accelerated data queries using data reflections, providing high performance access to data of any size, any format, and any source. And among other features, and most importantly, it ensures data governance, which means that roles related to data are clearly defined and that responsibility and accountability are agreed upon across the enterprise. And here, one of my most important learnings. Today, the most successful companies are those that can respond quickly and flexibly to market changes and opportunities. A key to this response is the effective and efficient use of data and information by analysts and managers. So as a recommendation and to wrap up my talk, I can only echo what Rick Sherman states. Do not spend time on monstrous complicated architectures that solve world hunger. Design something that you can start developing towards and that you can evolve over time. The architecture sets your direction and goals. It's a set of guiding principles, but should be flexible enough 
to allow for incremental growth. The world is not set in stone. You will be faced with changing business conditions and new technology. A rigid architecture will not be able to accommodate the changes. Rick Sherman. Thank you very much for your attention and taking the time to join the talk today. If you have any questions, happy to answer now. Otherwise, uh, shoot me an email or let's connect and stay in touch um, via LinkedIn. So I wish you then a, a good day to everyone and um, let's stay in touch. Thank you.